Man, oh man, oh man, oh man. I'm starting to sound like a broken record here, ladies and gentlemen. I remember back in 2016, I thought I was done talking about this godforsaken game. But here we are, almost two years later, and my third video in less than three months about this damn game. Square Enix is basically the Santa Claus of the community. They're the gift that keeps on giving, and I'm, of course, being satirical because Final Fantasy XV is not a gift to anyone. But let's talk about what went down today. So, just unveiled by Square Enix, we have a complete edition for Final Fantasy XV. I'm, of course, putting complete edition in bunny ears because complete and Final Fantasy XV should never be in the same sentence. It's very unfortunate. In this complete edition, titled the Final Fantasy XV Royal Edition, you are going to be getting a bevy of new content to add on to your unforgettable experience for new and old Final Fantasy fans. <laughs> yes, again, being very satirical with that. In this Royal Edition, which will launch on March, March 6th for $49.99, you get some new features. So first and foremost, you get an expanded map, Insomnia City Ruins, new side quests and enemies, a fully controllable Royal Vessel Boat. I, I love how they had to point out fully controllable. It's not like, you know, Final Fantasy XV was on rails for the majority of the game. It's not like they put you in this barren open world with not much to do and then have you go in this car that really does not have that much user control. It's, it's not like <laughs> that was one of the biggest problems in the game. Oh, a new accessory that can activate a new action. A brand new first person camera mode. So we're trying to be like GTA 5 up in this shit. More than a dozen pieces of downloadable content, including weapons, regalia car skins, item sets, and every pointless thing you can imagine, because that's basically all that cosmetic stuff. All season pass content, including episodes Gladio, Prompto, Ignis, and the multiplayer expansion Comrades. An archive where players can review the Cosmogani, I know I butchered that, stories scattered throughout the Final Fantasy XV world. An archive. <laughs> A new quest to obtain and strengthen the Regalia Type D, new trophies, and of course the Final Fantasy XV base game. But it doesn't stop there, ladies and gentlemen. If you are one of those people who already bought Final Fantasy XV and you're sad you can't get this new content, Square Enix is here to help you because for a low entry fee of only $19.99, you can get all of these new upgrades. However, if you are a person who bought the Season Pass, well, tough shit, you're done with that. You gotta still pay $19.99 to get this new content. So let me get this straight, and I'm gonna keep bringing this up. We were sold a beta of a Japanese RPG back in November. That game was $65 on release. Couple that with a $25 season pass. And now, this Royal Edition upgrade. That is over $100 to get the complete experience out of Final Fantasy XV. Do you guys know why I keep bringing this up and I keep talking about this game? Because Square Enix is royally, no pun intended, milking you for all you're worth. They sold you a shell of a game. They sold you a game with the Final Fantasy name that has less content than any mainline title in the franchise. A game where the, just the idea of playing as multiple characters throughout the story and getting backstory has to be sold as DLC. A game with an open world that was completely barren and incomplete and they have to keep updating it and patching it years after release. You're telling me that it's okay for them to do that. You're telling me that spending all this extra money so you can get stuff that should have been in the game that we know was planned for the game, you're telling me that I'm wrong for complaining about that? You're telling me that I'm a fake fan because I don't want to support these egregious business practices? So l l l let's get it like all on the same page here, right? We go after Capcom for dislock content with their fighting games. We go after EA for all the crazy stuff that they do in their titles. But with Square Enix, why can we not criticize them for what they're doing? This goes far beyond your enjoyment of the game. I don't care if you liked it or you hated the game. That is irrelevant. With the content that they are putting out here and they are selling, you're telling me this justifies over $100. Are you serious? And to all of you tools out there, all of you people who are defending this, who are damage controlling this, basically making it a case of, well, it was it had to be rushed because they switched developers and they switched the engines and the, all these hardworking people, they're still, shut up. I don't give a damn how hard these people are working on this game. 
a game that released in the state that it was, that you gave 9s and 10s to, that game, just because they are fixing it with free and paid content, that doesn't mean jack shit. Because we've seen other games from other studios that have set the standard, that have gone above and beyond of what it means to be a complete experience. So let's talk about a few of those games right now. Since people want to talk about the subject of Season Pass and DLC, you know, you, you can't get mad at them for doing DLC because everyone deal, does DLC. Let's talk about one of the best games of the generation that showed how you do post-release content. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. And I know this is going to piss off a lot of people because the sheer fact that I bring this up and I compare it to Final Fantasy XV, you can't compare a Western RPG to a champion. Shut up. You want to know why this game is one of the best and why it's one of the top selling games and it has so much longevity attached to it? Because at its core, the base game is so expansive. This is hundreds of hours of gameplay. Whether you're doing the main story or the side missions, it has side missions that are related to the main story that are not part of the main story. Side missions that take a little bit of a, just a sliver of dialogue from the main story and it makes it its own mission with hours of content. That is how you do an open world game and you make the world feel alive. But it didn't stop there because CD Projekt Red released an expansion pass. They released their own season pass. You got two quality expansions, one of which introduced one of the best villains in all of gaming. And each of those expansion packs had so much playtime attached to it. So many more missions and quests and basically this becomes like a 500 hour game with how much replayability you can get out of it. And they didn't have to release anything else after this. If you bought the game and the season pass, you were good. If you bought the game and you wanted to upgrade to the season pass, you were good. If you bought the game, or in this case, if you didn't buy the game and you wanted to experience it for the first time, this thing right here is the best bet. Final Fantasy XV Royal Edition, on the other hand, no. Whether you bought the game for the very first time or not, you are still getting screwed because there are rumors and rumblings throughout the industry that they are considering a wave two, a second season pass, if you will, which comes with what? Oh my god, another episode. Episode Arden or whatever. You know that character who we really didn't get a lot of screen time in the base game that people are saying is one of the best villains? Someone who rivals the, the likes of Kefka or Sephiroth? Yeah, that guy that we knew nothing about. You want to spend money? So you're telling me with all of these games out here that actually develop their main protagonists, they develop the side characters, they develop the world, they develop the lore, and of course they're villains. You're telling me that we gotta pay more for this? When do you stop paying for Final Fantasy XV? In 2020, when they come out with the Ultimate Edition? Let's talk about some other games that come out that don't need season passes, but they, they, um, like they really encourage replayability. Let's talk about Persona 5, you know, one of the biggest uh, rivals and adversaries for Final Fantasy XV. The game that Square Enix sent out surveys saying, which would you buy on release, Final Fantasy XV or Persona 5? This game. I don't even need to explain how much replayability you get out of a Persona title. But you want to know something? It has side missions that develop your main characters. The social links in this game, you can spend so much time just maxing all those out and learning about these characters. You don't need to buy an episode Anne or an episode Futaba. You don't need to do any of that because it's in this game. Free of charge. Couple that with the amazing story Everything in this game trumps Final Fantasy XV, and this isn't me being a fanboy of Atlas. No, we're talking about it from a pure developmental standpoint. And the sheer amount of content you get in this, there's no competition, there's no comparison. And you want know, to know the funny thing about it is? You could buy this game, don't gotta worry about no season pass. The only thing they've released for DLC is just cosmetic stuff. Nothing. You can replay this multiple times, you could still have fun with it. Let's talk about another game that really encourages, and I apologize for dropping it, multiple playthroughs for multiple different outcomes. Nier Automata. Nier Automata, Nier Tomato, whatever you want to call it. This game, the surprise hit of 2017. A game that has so many different endings that you're going to be going back here and wondering, like, what's the best way to play this game? And you're still going to find so much fun and enjoyment. This right here doesn't have an egregious season pass. You've got everything you need in this game for you to enjoy. So 
again, explain to me why they beta tested this JRPG and they're doing all this post-release content that, let's be real, is not worthwhile. Why is that okay? Why do we keep having to defend Square Enix time in and time out? Whenever any other company does this sort of thing, people are ready with their pitchforks and their tiki torches to burn the company down for being anti-consumer. But the second Square does it, we have to damage control it because they made Final Fantasy and they made Kingdom Hearts. People get a grip on it. You can say I'm a whiner and I'm complaining, but it's better for us to be vocal about the things we don't like so going forward they don't pull crap like this. And I gotta keep bringing this up. Just because they're fixing the game with all this content, that doesn't mean shit. Okay, yeah, they're fixing it, but you're still paying for that. That's like them, like you paying full price for a meal. You don't get any sides, you don't get any sauces, you only get half of the steak. And the fact that they are dealing it out in cubes, and if you pay just a little bit more, we'll sprinkle some parsley on it, that's somehow justified? No, it's not. I'm gonna keep talking about this game until you guys get it through your heads. Because as a fan of Final Fantasy, I am not looking forward to the future if stuff like this becomes the norm. The sheer fact that they're putting out this release screws everyone. And if you bought the season pass, you still have to upgrade to this. $20 for a fully controllable boat. Really? Wow. You know, it, it, it's funny when Morgana in this game is more controllable than the car in Final Fantasy XV where you're just sitting around and listening to tunes. I just... Wow. Standards. Standards have gone downhill.